Welcome back. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is my first video on this channel. Thank you for watching. Um, this is already off to a good start. Anyways, I'm going to be talking about my lighting. And up in the right corner here, I have some topics that I'll try to touch on as I'm going through. Um, I'm going to try to speed through the initial part of this and then come back and add some context and detail just after. So I have three lights and an environment map lighting this scene. So if you like the look of this guy in the lighting, um, I'm going to walk through this. The three lights here, and I know very dramatic, lots of shadow and highlight, but obviously I'm pairing it with an environment map. So don't judge too harshly on my three point lighting. I'm going to put on screen just a diagram of three point lighting. And here you can see it's a top down view. You have a, a subject here and it's being lit by a, a key light. And then opposite that light on the other side, uh, there's a fill light that brings up the shadows and then behind the model and above, there's usually a rim light or a backlight. And this helps define the shape of the hair or the head. So that's roughly what I'm doing. Um, I say roughly because if you look at mine, I'm going to turn off mine and come to the front. Like I've inverted that. I have my, I have my, uh, key light on the right side, but on the left side, I have, I do have the fill light filling in the shadows and I have a really intense, um, backlight here. I probably adjusted that based on the environment map. So that's why that's like that. And the reason why I'm doing lights and an environment map is I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying out things. This happened to work out. And I found out that there's a lot of pluses to it. So you have an environment map that looks like this by itself, very flat. And then, then I just showed you the lights, you know, high contrast, very dramatic. So wouldn't it be nice to have a control that lets you blend between the two so you can dial in a little more drama when you want. So that's the exposure control here down in the environment. You can do this. So I had it at 3.5. If I were to punch in zero, it's basically turned off. I'm going to undo. It's, it's pretty useful. I mean, it's really useful uh, to be able to like have that control. If you look at the topics that I have listed, I have orbiting your lights. So if you put three fingers on your screen and drag left to right, you can orbit or rotate your lights around your stationary model. And this includes the environment map, everything together is grouped and rotating around your model. So that's three finger gesture. That's really useful for discovering some inspiring angle of your lights. And once you're like, yep, that looks pretty good. I'm going to, I like where the lights are. I don't really want to fuss too much with that. You can still dial in even more granular control while not touching your main lights. So if you come down to the rotation here on the environment map, this rotation is only for the environment map. It is independent of the lights above. So you can do some, so take a look at the face of my character. I'm going to bring more shadow onto the left side. Just subtle adjustments like this are really nice. And you get two types of controls, like everything rotating or just the environment. So pretty versatile. Um, that's the gist of it. I will need to tell you a little bit about the settings for the lights and then the environment map. But if that was enough for you to say, like, I think I got it and I can go, then, uh, then go ahead and take off and do your thing. I'm just going to go through now and talk about the environment map. And I have a grayscale environment map, and it's a duplicate of this environment map, which is one of the nine default maps that come with Nomad. And if I come in here, it's called Vintage Measuring Lab. I did not desaturate this inside Nomad. I couldn't figure out how to do that. And if you're listening to Nomad, that would be an awesome feature to add. Just like right below exposure and rotation, just have like a desaturation slider. That would be amazing. And if you happen to know one, and I'm just, you know, too dumb to figure it out, please comment and tell me how to do that. I would love it. So I needed to go outside of Nomad to desaturate this. So I ended up typing vintage measuring lab into Google, and that pointed me to polyhaven.com. And that environment map was a free download. And then I brought it into Photoshop and desaturated it to grayscale, saved it as a JPEG, transferred that image back over to my iPad. And then in this menu, I just went up to import and just tap photos. And then I brought that photo in and now I have a grayscale. If you're curious why we do that, um, black and white, very neutral colored environment maps, uh, they don't bias your color. That's not a negative thing. Um, Environment maps that bias your color are intentional. That's part of the power of environment maps. You want the color information 
to light your scene. So if you look at these as I click through them, very different. It's almost like filters, but they give you totally different vibes. You might be looking for a mood or you're trying to match a matte painting that goes behind your character. So there's many reasons to use black and white. There's many reasons to use color, but I didn't want anything biasing the color that I, that I, when I was picking in my color picker, I wanted my white, when I picked white and I painted my model, I wanted it to just be pure white. So I just made a personal choice to make it grayscale. That's, that's it. I just want to tell you the process on how I got that done. So the other thing I'm going to tap into my lights and I have it set as directional. You can set it as spot or point, and you can see that all three of my lights are directional lights. Directional lights are an emulation of sunlight. It's meant to be the sun above. A point light is meant to be a light bulb. You know what? Let's just let's just show. Let's do a real world example here. So, turning off this, there's one of my sunlights. I live in a in a universe where there's three suns rotating my planet. So. So here I have a control. There's an arrow pointing off of my sun icon. I can click that and this tells Nomad where I want the sunlight to fall on my model. That's the only control for directional light. So one interesting thing, which is not true of, of spotlights and point lights is that um, X, Y, and Z position in 3D space does not matter. If you take a look at my character, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this light it didn't shift any of the light on my model. There's no impact there, whether I go, you know, up or down. So position for directional lights uh, does not matter. Whereas I'm gonna turn off, oh, actually, I'm gonna add a brand new light and we'll make this one a spotlight. So like I just said, a spotlight and a point light, you can immediately see that position matters. As I move my X, Y, it's being, it's affecting where the light falls on my model. So with the spotlight, it's kind of like a flashlight. Um, you have a very directional cone here. You can, you can widen the cone, which widens the spread of light. You can narrow it, which focuses, focuses the light into like a beam. Um, and those are the controls and you gotta, you know, you have to sort of angle your lights. So there's a, there's a little bit more needed to tell uh, a spotlight how to, how to direct the light, directional light, just, just that one pointer. Um, a, I'm gonna switch this to a point light and a point light is essentially a light bulb. So it's just like you're carrying around a ball of light. It's a single point emitting light in all directions. You can turn the intense, this is true of all the lights. You can turn up the intensity and change the color. Like if you're looking for like a, the glow of a fire, um, there you go. You know, you got a Sith, uh, you got a, a lightsaber. It's, where am I going with this? I don't know, I start to ramble anyways. Those are the differences. And can kill that, bring these back. And I think you're gonna I think you're gonna have fun with this. So I if you try this, please comment or send me a link to some result. I would love to know if it's working for you. I would love to know if you have improvements to this. I'm sure you do. It's not gonna be perfect for every model, even though I found it pretty versatile. I um I'll save this file and then make a copy of it and delete my model, put a, start a new model in there, but keep the lights. And it's been working pretty well for several of my projects. Anyways, that's, uh, I think that's all I have for this. Thank you for watching. Keep modeling and I'll see you next time.